Bollinger Bands are one of the most popular technical indicators available today. They can be used to discover areas where a stock is potentially overbought or oversold, or as a way to measure volatility. Today we'll be discussing how the study is actually calculated, go through a few real-life examples of how you guys can use it in your trading, and towards the end we'll even discuss how to create a very simple scan to actually find a recent Bollinger Band crossover. Beginning with the calculation of the Bollinger Bands themselves, our first step is by finding the simple moving average of the stock that we're looking at. Traditionally, you'll be using the 20 period simple moving average, but that can be adjusted. The moving average line itself will simply be the average price of the stock over the last 20 periods. This SMA line will actually appear as the center line of the Bollinger Bands themselves. Now, once we actually have the SMA figured out, we'll then move on to the upper and lower bands of the Bollinger Bands themselves. We'll find these by calculating a two standard deviation move to either side. These standard deviation lines will measure how far price action has deviated from our mean. It's also an incredibly simple way to see the volatility in the stock. These bands will actually expand or deviate from the SMA line during times of high volatility and then contract or get tighter during those times of low volatility. In the case of the Bollinger Bands, since they encompass a two standard deviation move to either side, they're actually telling you that 95% of the trading activity will take place between those two bands. Again, it's not super important to know the calculation themselves to actually understand the study, but that should be enough to ensure you know what it is you're looking at here. I'll also mention that in order to add and customize the Bollinger Bands themselves to your chart, you simply need to come up here to the Studies menu in the upper right hand corner. From there you guys can see that I obviously already have the Bollinger Bands on my chart right here down below. But if you haven't added them yet, you would simply come over here to the search box on the left hand side and go ahead and type in Bollinger Bands. Looking down below, you would simply find it in the list, go ahead and select it, and then hit Add Selected down in the lower left hand corner. From there, if you guys needed to edit the parameters of the Bollinger Bands or change the overall appearance of them, you could of course come over here to the little gear icon on the right hand side and open up the settings menu. This will then allow you to change the number of deviations if you wanted to change that. Currently it's a two standard deviation move to either side, but of course you guys could change that. And then right below that you can actually change the overall appearance settings as well. Now in my case you can see the SMA line or the midline is currently this tealish color and then the lower band is green and the upper band is red. Now in my case, I'm happy with all of these settings, so I'm simply gonna come over here and hit OK, and OK one more time. Now applying the Bollinger Bands in a practical application, you'll find that there are a few different methods that we could use to actually find our trade signals. The first method we'll cover is using the bands to find areas where a stock may be overbought or oversold. Keeping in mind that the upper and lower band will encompass 95% of the trading volume, traders may look at a reversal from those levels. This is also known as a mean reversion. Looking here at our chart as an example, we can actually see here that the price of Intel has actually broken below our lower band, and this could indicate that the price has fallen too aggressively and may bounce back to its mean. However, rather than buying into the position immediately upon the crossover, we may decide to wait until the price closes back up above that lower band. This could act as a sort of confirmation so we don't actually get into the position too soon. Now on the other hand, we can also look here on our chart and find a point at which the price has crossed above the upper band, indicating that it might be overextended and we may see a pullback back to its mean. So looking here at the chart, we can actually see that point at which the stock price crossed above the upper band, and then it went back down below the upper band and closed below that level. That right there would be our sell indication. Now a lot of traders will also decide to exit that position when it actually reverts back to its mean or reverts back to that SMA line. Others may choose to actually hold on to it a bit longer and actually wait until it hits the other band. Now obviously that is entirely up to you how long you're willing to maintain that position. Now it's also important to note that many traders will also look at the overall slope of the Bollinger Bands and making their decision. If the bands are sloping up, the stock is likely in an uptrend, and if it's sloping down, the stock is likely in a downtrend. So we may decide to only look at entry points in an uptrend and ignore them in a downtrend. As for the second method, this is actually by taking advantage of a breakout after a squeeze. Now a squeeze would occur when the volatility falls to low levels, being reflected in a narrowing of the Bollinger Bands. According to John Bollinger Band himself, the guy who actually created this indicator, this period of low volatility will often be followed by a period of high volatility. So basically a significant advance or decline in the price, which we can hopefully take advantage of. Now a buy signal would be seen if the price crosses above the upper band after a recent squeeze. 
A sell signal would be the exact opposite, a stock price crossing below the lower band after a recent squeeze. So looking here at our chart, we can again see a time period at which these bands are actually constricting or squeezing, indicating that there could be a breakout in one direction or the other. Now in this case, we can see that the stock price actually ended up crossing above that upper band, indicating a breakout to the upside. So this crossover could have been our potential buy signal. But now that we have a general idea of how we can actually use these Bollinger Bands to find a buy or sell opportunity, let's next go over how we would create a custom scan to actually find stocks that may meet this criteria right now. In order for us to do that, we'll simply come up here to the Scan tab at the very top of the page. The next thing we're going to do is actually come over here and add a filter, and specifically a study filter. We can then see a brand new filter pops up, specifically called the ADX crossover. And what we're going to do is come over there and select that drop down menu. We're then going to come down to the very bottom and select the custom filter option. This will then open up a pop-up window which we can actually pull down and then begin creating our own custom scan. In our case, the very first thing we need to do is actually delete this preloaded filter in here. So for ADX crossover, let's go ahead and get rid of that. We're then going to come down to the add a condition button down in the lower left hand corner. This window will now allow us to create our own custom conditions, and in my case, what I'm looking for is a recent Bollinger Band crossover. Specifically, I'm looking for stocks that were recently above the upper band, but in the last day have crossed back down below the band, indicating a potential sell signal. So in our case, the very first thing we're going to do is come up here to select a condition. It's going to be a pricing condition. We're then going to select the closing price. We're going to select is greater than. Then we're going to come over here and select a study condition and specifically find the Bollinger Bands indicator. Once we actually have that selected, the only thing we need to do is actually change this from the midline to the upper band. I'm then going to come down here and change the within bar to within two periods, which would be within two days. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the save button. Now we're not done yet. We actually have to add one more condition. So we're going to come over here to select another condition. We're going to come up and select another pricing condition. It's going to be based off the close once again. This time I'm looking for a recent cross below. So I'm going to change this to crosses below. We're going to come over here and select another study condition. And just like before, it's still going to be the Bollinger Bands. We'll once again go ahead and change this from the midline to the upper band. And just make sure we have within one bar selected. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll simply come down here and select save and hit OK. Now, of course, I could come over here and hit scan, and I'm sure I would have quite a few results. Let's go ahead and narrow this down even further. Let me go ahead and say the company had to have traded at least a million shares so far today. And I'll also say the stock has to be worth at least, let's say, 10 bucks a share. Coming up here and finding the word last, and we'll put $10 as the minimum. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll simply come down here and hit scan and see how many results we get. Looking down below, you can actually see there are only 12 results. And just to make sure this is actually working the way we want it to, let's go ahead and take a look at one of these guys. Looking here, we can see the top result is for PLAN, P-L-A-N. So let's come over here to our charts page and throw that stock ticker in there. Looking here at our chart, if we zoom in a little bit, what we're looking for is the price to have recently been above the upper band and then in the last day to have crossed back below it. So in this case, plan does meet our criteria, and specifically, this would be a sell signal for us right here. Now, if I wanted to double check that one more time, I could come back here to the scan tab, and let's take a look at the next guy here, BKI. Go ahead and throw that in there. Once again, we'll come over here to the current time frame and go ahead and zoom in. And again, you can see that the stock price has recently been above the upper band, and then within the last day, it has crossed back below it, again, giving us a sell signal. Now, of course, it's important to mention that the Bollinger Bands are not perfect, and you will probably use this in concert with many other indicators to actually confirm a potential buy or sell. But I think this was a fairly comprehensive introduction to the Bollinger Bands and the ways you guys can use it in your trading. If you have any questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on the Bollinger Bands. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll catch you on the next one.